guys, Mr. Backwork here. This is part two of lesson 3.1. Two objectives we're gonna cover in this video. We are going to talk about something called the natural base E, and then we're gonna look at some exponential functions as far as modeling and solving some real world problems. The first thing I wanna do is introduce this thing called the natural base, and it's this E number that you can see on your screen right now. And E works a lot like pi. We use that pi symbol to represent this big long string of decimals that we use a lot of times when we're dealing with circles. Well, E is exactly the same way. We use the symbol E to represent this number 2.71, so on and so forth. So if we took the function f of x equals e to the x, we would call that a natural exponential function. Now what I wanna do first with this exponential function is just get used to working with it and finding it on the calculator. So we're gonna evaluate this f of x equals e to the x at three different x values using our calculator. So we're gonna plug in negative two, negative one, and 0.25 for this x value in our function using our calculator. Now to find that e to the x button on your calculator, you'll have to look on the far left hand side and you'll find this LN button right above it as a second command. You'll see that E to the X thing. So if I go second, hit that LN button, it'll bring up the E and it lets me put a power on this. And the first power we said that we were gonna plug in here was negative two. So if we go E to the negative second power, I'm gonna get 0.135 approximately. If we go second LN and use that negative one power, we get 0.368 if we round it off. And last one we said we were gonna plug in was 0.25. So I plug that in, hit enter, and I get 1.284 if we round that one off. What I wanna do next is look at the graph of one of these natural exponential functions. Now, I'm not gonna sketch this one out by hand. I'm gonna use my calculator to help me out. So I'm gonna go into my calculator to that y equals screen and just type in this 2e to the 0.24x. Here's my calculator with the function typed in. If I hit graph, it's gonna look a lot like those exponential functions that we graphed out in the last video. It's kind of flat along that negative portion of the x-axis, but as we move through some of those positive numbers, our graph starts to increase very rapidly. Now we're gonna start doing some applications with exponential functions. The formula you see on your screen right now is for compound interest. And all of those variables inside of that formula stand for something. A stands for the amount of our interest that we're getting. P stands for our principal investment. That R value is our interest rate. And when we write out our interest rate, we're gonna take whatever interest percentage that we're given and rewrite it in decimal form. N stands for the number of compoundings that we're doing, and T stands for our time frame in years. There is another formula that we'll use along the way for something called continuous compounding, and it's this A equals PE to the power RT function. And again, P stands for our principal, which just means the amount of money that we're starting with. E is that natural base that we just talked about. R is our interest percentage written in decimal form, and T is our time frame in years. In this first example, we're gonna be dealing with an initial investment of $12,000. We're gonna get an interest rate of 9%, and we're gonna find our balance after five years doing a couple different kinds of compounding. The first thing we're gonna look at is compounding this quarterly. First thing I'm gonna do is just write out that formula from the last page, so it's a equals P times one plus R over N to the power of N times T. And now what I'm gonna do is start plugging in some numbers. We know that our principal investment is at $12,000 that we started with times one plus, with this interest rate, we have to remember to turn that into a decimal. So I'm gonna do a decimal slide two places to the left and get 0.09 over well, the number of compoundings, if we're compounding this quarterly, that's gonna be four times. And then up top, we've got that N value again, so four, and our time in years is five years. And now what I'm gonna do is just start typing this stuff into my calculator. 
Now when I type in this power, it's four times five. So we could just say that's a power of 20. If we hit enter, here's the answer we get, 18,726.11. And I'm gonna round off to that hundredths place since we're dealing with money. That would be like our cents. With this next example, nothing is gonna change except for the number of compoundings. We're gonna do this thing monthly now. So as far as plugging in that information, our principal amount is still $12,000 times one plus 0 0.09. Now this N value is changing. We're doing this monthly, so that means 12 times. N value up top is 12 again, and our time frame is still five years. And again, I'm just gonna type this stuff into my calculator. Now with this power, when I type it in, again, I'm gonna multiply those things together. We were taking 12 times five, so that's a power of 60. Hit enter, and I'm gonna round this thing off to the hundredth place again, so it would be $18,788.17. Now for this last one, we're gonna do continuously compounding, so we have to adjust our formula a little bit. It's gonna be that PE to the RT power formula. So if I start plugging numbers into this one, our principal amount is still $12,000. Remember, E is a number, and for the power, our rate is 0 .09, because we want that thing to be a decimal again, and our time frame is still five years. So now for this one, I'm gonna type this into my calculator. Typing this power in, if we take 0 .09 times five, we get 0.45. Hitting enter, we get $18,819, and we would round this to 75 cents. On this next example, we're gonna change the numbers just a little bit. This time, we're depositing $25,000 into a trust fund that's gonna pay eight and a quarter percent, and we wanna figure out how much is in this account when this child turns 26. Now, what I'm gonna do is, on here, I'm gonna write out all of the different formulas first with the numbers plugged in, and then I'm just gonna go into my calculator one time and type in all three of these. So on the first one, we're compounding that yearly. So we're gonna use that A equals our principal investment, so $25,000 times one plus the interest rate in terms of a decimal, so slide the decimal two spaces to the left, so it's 0 .0825 over well, if we're compounding this thing yearly, it's just once. And then our power is gonna be one times that time frame. Well, we started when this child was born. It's 26 years later, so it's 26 for that T value. For the next one, we're gonna compound this monthly. So we've got $25,000 times one plus, again, our interest rate is still 0 0.0825 over this time we're compounding monthly, so 12 times. N value is 12 again, and the years are still 26. Last one is gonna be continuously compounded, so that's A equals our principal investment times E to the power of that rate, 0 0.0825, times the years 26. Now I'm gonna go into my calculator and type in all three of these things to get those three different answers. For the first one, compounding yearly, our power is just gonna be 26 because one times 26 is 26. We get $196,365.66. Next one I'm doing is compounding monthly, so I'm gonna change that N value to a 12. For the power, if we take 12 times 26, we get 312. Hit enter, and we get $211,989.34. Last one, we are doing continuously compounding. When we do this exponent, if we take the 0 .0825 times 26, we get 2.145 as our power. Hit enter and we get $213,551.03. Last example we're doing is kind of a real world application type. 
problem with some radioactive decay. So in 1986, there was a nuclear reactor accident in Chernobyl, which was then part of the Soviet Union. When this reactor exploded, it spread a bunch of radioactive chemicals, such as plutonium, over the land. So what we're going to look at is how much plutonium is left currently. After 10,000 years, how much will be left? And after 100,000 years, how much will be left? So we're going to use this model P equals 10 times 1 half to the power of T divided by 24,100. And all of these numbers that we're going to plug in are T values, they're years. To figure out how much plutonium is currently left, we first need to find our T value. Right now it's the year 2015. This happened in 1986. So the T value we're going to work with is 29. So we'll go 10 times a half, plug in that 29 for our T value, divided by 24,100. And I'm just going to type this into my calculator right away. So I've actually already got this one typed in. 10 times 1 half to the power of 29 divided by 24,100. If I hit enter, it tells me there are 9.992 pounds left over from the original explosion. For the next one, we're going to change that T value to 10,000. Hit enter, and there will still be 7.5 pounds left over after 10,000 years have gone by. And for the last one, we're going to use a T value of 100,000. So after 100,000 years, there will still be just over half a pound of this plutonium left over. I guess that's it as far as this video goes. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.